Hi, my name is Brad Constantine, and this is a podcast of the New Testament. I'll be using as the text the King James Version, along with the Joseph Smith Translation. Although this is not an official recording of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, every effort's been made to be as doctrinally accurate as possible. I'll also be using quotes from general authorities of the Church, the Apostles and Prophets, and BYU professors and others, and uh, every word out of the Scriptures themselves. So if you're ready for a really detailed analysis of the New Testament, you've come to the right place. Welcome. Hi there, welcome back. This will be for 1 Corinthians chapter 5. I'm going to read the heading first. The church cannot fellowship sinners. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Verse 1. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles that one should have his father's wife. This meant any sexual relations outside of marriage is what he's talking about here. Apparently a member of the church in Corinth <clears throat> had married his stepmother either because she was a widow or had been separated from her prior husband. Such marriages were forbidden by the Mosaic Code under penalty of excommunication. Paul endorses the Mosaic prohibition, describes the intimacies resulting from such unions as fornication, condemns his Corinthian brethren for winking at the offense, and directs the excommunication of the offender. If the sinner were left in the church, Paul reasons, his influence as leaven would spread throughout the whole church. The church must, therefore, purge out this old leaven of wickedness and replace it with a new influence or leaven of righteousness. Verse 2, And ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. They are proud of the fact that they have shown tolerance for a serious sinner. For I verily, as, as it were, absent in body, but present in spirit, I have judged already him that hath so done this deed as though I were present. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together and have the Spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the Spirit may be saved in the day of Lord Jesus. This fellow needs to be excommunicated, is what he's telling him. From Latter-day Revelation, we learn that following celestial marriage, a man may, take, may make his calling and election sure. That is, he may progress in righteousness until he is sealed up unto eternal life and his, exal and his exaltation is guaranteed. Such is the state to which Isaiah, Ezekiel, Joseph Smith, Paul himself, and others attained. A person in this state is subject to the law to which Paul here merely alludes, but which is given in more amplified form in the Doctrine and Covenants in these words. This is section 132. Verily, verily, I say unto you, if a man marry a wife according to my word... And if their calling and election is made sure, and they are sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise, according to mine appointment, and he or she shall commit any sin or transgression of the new and everlasting covenant, whatever, and all manner of blasphemies, and if they commit no murder wherein they shed innocent blood, yet they shall come forth in the first resurrection, and enter into their exaltation. But they shall be destroyed in the flesh, and shall be delivered unto the buffetings of Satan, unto the day of redemption, saith the Lord God. Verse 6, Your glorying or boasting is not good. Know ye not that a little leaven le leaveneth the whole, the whole lump? Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened, for even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. I wrote unto you in an epistle... In other words, he's already had, he, he had already written an epistle which has been lost to us. This epistle is in response to specific questions that arose from his first letter. I wrote unto you in an epistle not to company with fornicators. Here he's talking about sexually immoral persons and male prostitutes. The contentious souls in the Corinthian congregation wrote a reply taking issue with some of the doctrines of the apostles and asking detailed questions about his teachings. Thereupon, with vigor and true apostolic zeal, Paul wrote a second epistle, canonized and known as 1 Corinthians, which answered the points raised by his detractors and further amplified the teachings of the original letter. Unfortunately, we do not know what was said in, prior, in Paul's prior epistle to the Corinthians, nor in their reply to him. All that has come to us is his reply to his reply. We have thus only a few comments about certain aspects of the doctrines they, they were considering. Do not company with fornicators, not because ye are too good for them, but as C.S. Lewis wrote, because you are not good enough. Remember that bad situations can wear down even good people. Joseph had both good sense and good legs in fleeing from Potiphar's wife. And that was by Elder Maxwell. 
Verse 10, yet not altogether with the fornicators of this world or with the covetous or extortioners or with idolaters, for then must ye needs go out of the world. But now I have written unto you not to keep company. If any man that is called a brother be a fornicator or covetous or an idolater or a railer or a drunkard or an extortioner with such an one, no, not to eat. For what have I to do to judge them also that are without? Do not they judge them that are within? But them that are without God, but them that are without God judgeth. Therefore, put away from among yourselves that wicked person. Paul wrote the Corinthians in an epistle since lost and unknown, not to company with fornicators. Here he qualifies his previous command. What he intended to forbid was the fellowshipping of such persons in the church. They should be handled for their membership unless, of course, they repent. Now also he extends his instructions to include members of the church who are covetous, idolaters, railers, drunkards, and extortioners. Manifestly, he explains to, to avoid all such who are in the world would require us to go out of the world itself. That was by Bruce R. McConkie. So anyway, that's the end of the chapter, and we'll see you next time. Bye.